How's it going, Teal Boys? It is week seven. We're sitting at a nice five and one, one game away from bowl eligibility up on the road against a Virginia Tech team that has a lower overall than us that can't hold on to the football, which is some of you we typically struggle with. So maybe getting to play a team that uh, turns the ball over a lot will be nice. And uh, defensively, we're better. Offensively, they do have the edge. But if we look at it, it's not by much. So I'm pretty excited here. Now, before we go and do our recruiting and, you know, take a look at ESPN, uh, Josh Oliver wanted us to do some formation subs. I gotta say, I think I agree right now. So let's go in and we'll change a couple things out. I know one for sure that we need to do, and that's our Philly special package. CJ Beasley's gonna come out because uh, Braden Bennett is a better passer. And if we're gonna have the running back passing, we should be, uh, you know, putting in the better player but let's go through and we'll find a couple of spots where it makes more sense for him to be in now for the most part Braden Bennett is a faster running back than CJ Beasley so uh we should be looking to put him in in spots where speed makes a little bit more sense so I think some shotgun formations we'll go ahead and make the change um we won't change everything but we'll, we'll you know we'll make it so that we have a little bit more of a uh you know a mix up there and that way, Braden gets a, a few more opportunities to, to get the ball. I think this will be an interesting week in recruiting for us. I think we had a bunch of guys commit somewhere else last week. Um, I'm not sure. I think we lost, uh, yeah, Andre Atkins, the crazy, crazy athlete to Kentucky. I mean, this guy, if I can finally get to the scouting, 98 speed, 95 acceleration is absurd. Uh, it's just not going to work in our favor. I think we got locked out maybe by a couple of players. So we might be trying to work our way back in with uh, Brian Mason or Sean McBride. But Ron Winston, this athlete's going to go to Arizona. And is that it? Yeah, so two unlocks. Do we even have unlocks? Or do we only have the one? Um, okay, so we don't have any unlocks available to us right now. Which, unless we level up soon, and I don't think that we will. Yeah, we're really far off. We're not going to be able to pick those guys up. So, kind of a shame. Uh, we decided to level up away from that unlock capability on purpose. Hopefully, it doesn't bite us too much. Mike Shelby, we used the unlock on him. Only 700 behind Tamu now. Getting a solid amount of bonus points. Um, why is it showing... On one screen, it shows us getting 190. And on the other, it's 295. So, that's a little bit weird. I don't know which to believe. Um... But who knows, our championship contender and our conference prestige, again, if they can continue to rise, that'll be good news for us. And with our visit week 12, that might be enough for us to jump in the lead. We'll definitely take Mike Shelby to the offseason. The question is, how easy of a pickup will it be at that point? And uh, for our points this week, I think we have a few guys to scout. We only have 23 players on the board. Oh, okay. Well, we need to go and scout a bunch of players. We can't. It's not a good look to have only 23 players on the board. So I'll, uh, you know, back out of this and, and do that. And I'll come back to you and we'll we'll do some scouting this week, I guess. All right. So we have put a bunch of guys onto the board, 12 of them to be precise. And it's time to scout them and uh, hope for the best here. I looked a little bit at some low lock cheese. We're looking for some players maybe that had uh, some interest in us, some juco player too so hope for the best and we'll just start going through doesn't matter as long as they're like 69 overall or higher we've got a tight end which is one of our only offensive needs for next season we find a gem in mike scott <laughs> what a name the paper pusher could already be uh prepared to play for us 70 pass 71 run blocking pretty solid he can catch really well he's pretty quick i like that pickup a lot potentially uh, Robert Brown, an athlete at 76 overall. Mike Wood, the free safety, goes up to a 74. I like that quite a bit. He's quick. He's got decent coverage, but he can tackle pretty well. How about this wide receiver, Larry Fenner? 96 speed, 84 acceleration. I think he ran a 4-3-40, which is pretty impressive. Uh, Anthony Jones, what a name there. 73 overall for the defensive end. And he's pretty quick for a D-end. Maybe not as strong as I would like, but I don't mind it. Willie Holt goes up to a 76. Man, this is a great pickup so far. Everybody's just moving up. Thomas Burton does. Brad Wright goes up to a 76. Ryan Dodds goes down to a 68. Is this guy... No, nah, he's not going to make the, uh, the cut there. How about Ryan Patterson? We've got an outside linebacker here. He's going to be a gem up to a 77 overall. 
and Corey King the center. Not a whole lot of offensive linemen looked at right there, but he stays in the bounds uh, that we've set at 69 overall. So still a possibility for us to pick him up. And now we can give points to these guys. Uh, Joe Rogers, it kind of looks like Georgia Southern is now going to try to gun for him, but I don't want to give him points really yet. We'll give him 25 here just so that we can round up to 5,900 of our 6,500 gone. Uh, but I'm not super worried. He doesn't have his visit yet. He might be ready for us to set that up. So we'll get that figured out. Mike Shelby is going to continue to get the points. Aaron Jenkins, we're still gaining, which is good. Losing 45 to South Carolina. But again, this one, hopefully the visit for South Carolina isn't too good. We need to have a good week here. And our bonus points need to level out because they might get him to commit after that. But hoping to hold on. Mario Smith, we're losing 825 a week with that outside linebacker, which is... A big shame because there's no way that we can fight back for that. And just kind of all around looking similar. Losing five to Logan Smith. We'll go ahead and bump him up to 600. Uh, Middle Tennessee did just have their visit. So I'm not too worried yet. But we want to get to the top there. And uh, like always, I'm going to go through. I'll check all these players and uh, I'll see you know what it is that we need to do to get ourselves into a solid position on these players and hope that uh, we don't do it too poorly. All right, so I've got that figured out. Had to take a couple more players off the board just because we were like 4,000 points behind. Uh, you know, you got to know when to fold them. <laughs> and how about across the country? Any crazy games playing? We've got uh, Auburn playing at Ole Miss. We've got Oregon playing Arizona State. And is that it for ranked games? Uh, well, 17 and 18 in Michigan State and Wisconsin will play. Uh, Illinois will play a number 22. Ohio State and Nebraska will play a number 25. Penn State. So nothing too crazy. We are receiving votes in the coaches poll. 27th there. But again, in the media poll, we're like 23rd. So we just want to get ranked in both of them and start to work our way up. Hoping to go 6-1 and one here would be a nice game against Virginia Tech. 90 overall to their 84. I like that. We have a 10 overall advantage on offense and our defenses are supposedly even. So we have the opportunity here. The question is, will we be able to get it done? Uh, I'm not sure. So definitely a little bit worried. We're just going to go. I don't really know what to wear for. Let's just wear our standard ways. Why not? Uh, standard uniforms have been working pretty well for us this season. I don't remember. I feel like we gave uh, Virginia Tech a weird alternate last year. Uh, we could make them look like Tennessee or something, but I think that we're just going to go with that uh, alt one. A lot of maroon with the orange helmets. I like the gloves. Let's see. Can we get this one done? So again, offensively, Virginia Tech has passed the ball well this season, but that's about it. And defensively, they have not done well to save their lives we have pretty much a top 10 defense we aren't great at stopping the pass but best in the country at stopping the run top five in yards given up and top 10 on points allowed which is great their top players very good but they're overall so much lower than us which means they have some good players at the top and then they drop off not a whole lot of depth 94 overall for the strong safety and wide receiver and then they've got a good kicker as well and injury wise they've got it their quarterback maybe the starter out with a torn shoulder and they're running back potentially with a complete PCL tear. That's pretty rough out for the rest of the season. And that might be why Virginia Tech is having such a rough time this year. So we're here at Lane Stadium looking to get that sixth win of the year. That's all important for us. Tails never fails. We will win the toss. And we're going to elect to kick this one off to start it. Four miles now we're on the win today. So I've gone ahead and checked, and uh, it is the starting quarterback and the starting running back out with injuries for this uh, Virginia Tech Hokies team. And I got to tell you, it's looking good for us. The backup running back for the team, still 80 overall, but this quarterback's only 68 overall, and it might kind of explain why as he throws one up and reaches cup. Okay, well, I'm going to say it would explain why they have minus eight turnovers. But Medlock just yeeted that one up, and Roger Reed somehow got burned. So they're passing the ball even with a bad quarterback, and we're getting just obliterated. Two passes gets them inside the red zone. This is unacceptable. They are moving the ball. Here's the handoff. Kale Mackey slows him down, so we only allow Greer to get back to the line. 
And we're going to just continue to blitz as much as possible. We've got to make these guys uncomfortable. Although, how bad can our man coverage be? The tackle missed by Roger Reed after he blew the assignment. And Virginia's Tech scores in what is that? Four plays? This is a 68 overall quarterback. I want you guys to know that. 68 overall. Yeah, sometimes I think that uh, I got to imagine his passing is going to be better than Grayson's. Well, that was a slap to the face from our defense. I cannot believe that they did that poorly. Let's see. Maybe we return this and allow them just to get a second chance at this. Jackson's gone. Kicker to beat. He's down the sideline. Jackson did it. All right. So the defense is going to have to come right back out. It's tied up at 7-all. I know the scoreboard's glitched out, but that's... Uh, one way to answer back, I guess. So we'll just try to pretend like the first minute of the, of the game just hasn't happened and we're starting over from scratch. Uh, they just happened to give both teams seven points to start the game. Now, this team does have a, a pretty solid wide receiver core, but it's a 68 overall quarterback. They can't be that good. Roger Reed making up for it with the pick. That's what I was expecting to see the first drive. Uh, Steven Medlock. Finally has an incompletion, and now we have a chance to take the lead. Just a weird start to the game. As they're going to bring pressure on first down, and we will not find the running back on the pass. Grayson starting 0-1. Let's go ahead and run the ball on this second down. Try to make it a manageable third as C.J. Beasley up the middle. Gets a big chunk and makes it a third and three. I am going to run it again on this third down. This is four down territory. And if we were to lose a bunch of yards, we were in field goal range, but CJ's got it done. So we'll go to the air five wide on this first and 10. Easy pass to Dion Fountain in the coverage there. Trying to get to him in the open space was a little bit weird, and he got another first down. So just a pretty solid start for us there as we'll continue to run the ball in our offensive line. Getting a great push on these running plays so far. Going to the air on second and three. Four receivers out to the right. This could be a little bit congested as we're going to scramble and Grayson <laughs> going to have to take a dive there because there's way too many defenders to find the end zone. It is first and goal though as we'll be handing this one off to Beasley and up the middle. Not a lot doing there. Got a yard, but no more. All right, we'll see if this works. We haven't really run this before, but the toss play... The blocking not there for CJ. I should have expected that. Our blocking out towards the edge is rarely good. And it's third and goal after a loss of two. So let's look to the air. On third and goal. Hopefully this works well. Malden wide open. Back of the end zone. Beautiful little corner out. And Logan is going to be hard to replace. But while we have him, we're going to love it. Easy reception for him. Sure hands. And it gives us the 14-7 lead. So third time today, we're kicking the ball off here in the first quarter, and we'll see. The defense got obliterated the first drive, got a turnover the second. Are we going to meet in the middle somewhere here on the third? Definitely expecting them to run the ball more as they should. Um, There's a handoff steal, just weird angle, and oh no. It's going to be back and forth maybe. Greer, 17 yards there. On this first down, we're bringing the safety blitz. It doesn't matter. Shelton gets just bopped. No chance. And Greer gets the stiff arm cheese and 14 more there. Oh, man. This this game is be real weird for us right now as there's a completion for seven yards. And uh, I, this team is back and forth, really. Going to continue to blitz on uh, a lot of these plays. This one, they're going to go to the air. Charles Steele. Got pressure on the quarterback, and Medlock throws it away. Forces a third down here. We're going to take a bit of a chance here. I do expect them to run the ball on a lot of these plays. That's uh, where they should be most consistent, so we'll try to stop it. The block. Oh, my gosh. The blocking's incredible, and they're going to score. Are you kidding me? The option to the left works for a 37-yard touchdown. Our guys were running into each other. They were blocking each other. Beautiful pitch from the quarterback. Should have never happened, though. So it's a tie game as uh, our defense is either incredible or terrible. There's no in-between for them, and it's, uh, it seems to be pretty random at the start of each drive whether or not you know we're going to get a good one out there. This will be our offense's first true drive of the game. 
And you know what? I'm going to send uh, Marquise deep. One deep safety. We'll see what he does. He's going to go to the right. So let's throw the timing route. And, well, I guess we're just going to be more inaccurate than a 68 overall quarterback and miss our man. It can be really frustrating passing with Grayson sometimes. Brayden Bennett's in for this second and 10 running the ball. And our blocking is nowhere. So it's a loss of two and it's third and long. Well, we're going to throw up a four verts on this one. Uh, except we're going for this on fourth down. Maybe no, we don't need to. Dion Fountain's gone. The beautiful downfield blocking, although number 18, I don't even know who that is. Logan Malden, DJ Johnson, something like that. Slowed down in what should have been a touchdown. Is uh, just a big gain inside the red zone. I guess, to be fair, I could have slowed down to allow him to pick up the block, but how is he that slow? That's unacceptable. Beasley on that first down gets us inside the 10 with a two-yard pickup. And this is a weird game. Pretty high scoring so far as we are nearing the end of the first quarter and that incompletion makes it another third and long. So let's see what we can get on this one. Third and eight looking for the running back. They're bringing pressure. Running back open. No, back of the end zone. I've thrown the pick. Guys were there. I just, uh, I was late throwing the ball. It was kind of inaccurate all around. Just a, a bad situation there and... Uh, this game is really frustrating me so far. We should be dominating. I'm going to bring the pressure. This quarterback does not get a chance to throw on this play as far as I'm concerned because we've gone in gauge eight and we will hit him as he's throwing it out into the flat and it's incomplete. So the gamble on first down pays off. And now we just got to uh, make sure that things go all right here. Another option. They scored on this play last time. My goodness, their blocking is impeccable on that option play. They got six yards. It could have been a whole lot more. Seems that it does not matter what uh, what kind of offense they run. It's going to be close. We're bringing the corner blitz on this one, but on third down, they hand it off, and he's met in the backfield by uh, Sidney McRae for a loss. It's fourth and seven. The defense has figured out how to hold again. So on what will likely be the last play of the first quarter, we will get the special teams out and a chance for Jackson to have a decent punt return here. If the blocking is any good, and if he has the speed, he's got the corner. And he's got a good field position there just across the 45-yard line, tied up at the end of one. Not exactly how I would have liked to start the game. We shouldn't have a pick. Uh, we should definitely be up multiple scores, but maybe we figured out their offense and maybe we can, you know, just get out of this one. Dion Fountain's going to be wide open here. Easy first down throw to the man who's having a pretty solid game, and there's a very easy 11-yard reception to him. We're going to run the play out of the Wildcat here. A little uh, jet sweep to Braden Bennett. Halfback direct snapped is good. And Braden, uh, just the blocking on the edge doesn't hold up very well. Wide receivers didn't do their job, and it's just back to the line of scrimmage. There was a great chance for that one to work out. It just didn't. They're bringing a blitz here. Grayson, I got to get him outside the pocket, making a tough throw. Marquise Jackson got held up, or Grayson was inaccurate. That one missed by a mile, and it's third and long again. Definitely not enjoying all these third downs that we're dealing with. As we'll step back to pass again and a tough throw finds Marquise Jackson and the freshman diving makes a, uh, or maybe the sophomore, I don't remember, makes a diving one-handed grab to get the first down. It's pretty clutch. I feel bad for Marquise because I keep calling him a freshman, but because he's coming off of his redshirt year, so I just forget what the deal is as, is that Mobley wide open? The fake fly finds Tyson Mobley, and we get into the end zone to take the lead again. Question is, will the defense be able to do anything to stop the Hokies? The wind at our back for this second quarter means Frederick should be able to get this into the end zone, and I'll expect them to bring it out, though. Special teams, eh, doing okay. Let's go back to the man coverage for a drive as they will hand this one out off towards the edge. Uh... Oh my gosh, this guy's still not tackled, running around. He ran about 50 yards just to get back to the line of scrimmage, and we're lucky he didn't get a whole lot more. Definitely expecting some passes to show up as they're going to run that option again. Kale Mackey strung him out, forced him to cut it inside. We can get the tackle to force the third and long. So now the question on this third and 10 is going to be, what can we do to stop the pass? We know this isn't a great quarterback. He's got a man open, but Shelton's there for the easy tackle. Thank goodness he was running back towards the ball. Defense gets another stop. 
And what I really want at this point is just for us to be able to open the floodgates uh, and start scoring at will against these guys, but punt goes out of bound. No chance of the return, and the offense needs to have a good drive here. I'm taking a risk on this one. Fake fly, flea flicker coming in on first and 10 to start this drive outside the pocket. B is open and Bedgood downfield with the flea flicker goes across midfield to the 40 yard line. Oh, just uh, didn't get covered there. Uh, that's a big play. Another first down. We're going to try the play action and throwing it up. Marquise Jackson beats his man and gets it in the end zone. Oh, I was worried that we were about to take a sack there, so I was trying to throw it as quick as possible, but Grayson gets it off, finds the end zone, and it's just like that, a 14-point lead for us. Now it's up to the defense to get another stop because I want to blow these guys out. In our quest for getting some respect from the pollsters, I think that we have to blow out a 1-3 Virginia Tech who's missing its starting running back and quarterback, where the backup is a 68 overall at quarterback. So I want to see the defense continue to do well. They need to, all things considered. And, oh, I can't miss tackles. That one's on me, thankfully, uh, which is good. I, if, if the problems are with me, it's never an issue. It's when the CPU uh, is struggling that I see problems, and there it is. Man coverage, we're getting burned deep, and uh, see, uh, this Virginia Tech team is so back and forth. We'll try the corner blitz on this one, hoping for the best. They do bring a man in motion. Wouldn't be surprised if this is a run, and yeah, it is handed off. Kale Mackey able to bring him down, before, you know, not before he picks up three yards. On this second and seven, they're going to step back to pass it. Oh, we were there for the pick. Just kind of bounced off of it, so it's third and seven. And we'll hope to contain on this one. Was looking to uh, step back and try to stop him. Quarterback getting flushed out of the pocket and he gets sacked. I'm surprised he didn't throw. He had guys available but didn't go to him and it's fourth and 14. This will be a long field goal. And what is this? 52 yards almost. We're going to send Marquise back and try for the kick six. He's already got one special teams touchdown on the day. This is, oh my gosh, the kicker has an absolute cannon of a leg. Just launched it through the uprights. Uh, impressive kick. And it's 28-17. So that gives us 219 left in the half. And uh, maybe a chance for us to extend the lead. We do get the ball again to start the third quarter. So the better we do uh, in this first half, the easier it's going to be in the second. And I'm definitely looking to score at least a touchdown on this drive. Outside the pocket, Grayson. Maybe has a man open. Tough throw. Finds Logan Maldon. He gets out of bounds to temporarily stop the clock. And we scored with this play last time, but we're going to send uh, Marquise Jackson deep in. No. Okay, we just got self-sacked, essentially. I think Grayson ran into uh, CJ Beasley there. And, yeah, couldn't, couldn't drop back in the pocket. So we lose yardage. A little bit frustrating. Second and 16 now for us. We're going to go empty backfield and try to throw again. Jackson wide open. He's just got the speed right now to burn his man. And Grayson, thankfully, has been pretty accurate. And if they're unable to keep up with him, I'm going to just continue to throw to him. And this could be another one. Marquise going to be 50-50. And oh, we've thrown our second pick of the day. Of course, he's going to break the tackle as well. So they get decent field position. I'm losing the turnover battle to freaking Virginia Tech right now. Oh, good play from the safety. This is entirely on me. Just getting greedy looking for home runs when base hits will do. So we just got to hope that uh, it doesn't bite us too much as we get the sack there. And Virginia Tech's taking their timeouts. I think we might do the same if we have to. We're we'll switching the nickel for the rest of this drive to see if it works. I'm expecting them to do a lot of passing. So hopefully uh, that works in our favor. Quarterback all the time in the world finds his man is... Stokes got kind of beat uh, just too far off on the zone. And on third and two, hopefully they don't run the ball here. Less than a minute to go. If they go to the air, there's a chance we stop them. And they might be burning the clock. So they're worried they're not going to pick this one up, which makes me a little bit worrisome about our play call. 
They're gonna snap it. It will be a play action. Guys potentially open all over the field. They're throwing deep and it's wide open. Oh my goodness, what are we doing? This team is so disappointing. They're easily in field goal range now. We know their kicker's pretty incredible and they're looking to score a touchdown and the way they're moving the ball, they're going to. I'm just gonna reiterate that this is a 68 overall quarterback who's dotting us up right now. It's actually absurd how good the teams that we play end up against us. Diggs just dropped a pick six, and that might be the last chance we get the way this quarterback's playing. 17 seconds means we either need really bad clock mismanagement from this team, or a lot of luck, or maybe both, and I don't know if we're going to get either. 12, 11 seconds. I'm going to call the timeout here. I think that we can get them to make a mistake, but I know for a fact that they would be able to get the field goal. So this, you know, just buys us time for a kick return or something. Even if we don't uh, pick up the stop as they go over the middle. And there's the first and goal. Again, I'm taking the time out. I know this is a super questionable decision, but I think it's our only way to make sure that we touch the ball as the quarterback goes up the middle and there. Now they're going to have to take the time out, but eh, three seconds left. Hopefully it's a quick field goal. They were getting it no matter what. We just have kind of made it, so maybe there's a chance we have a chance to score afterwards. Second and goal, hoping for the best as the kick is up and uh, zero seconds on the clock. We're only up eight on this freaking team going into the half. That is such a joke from both our offense and defense that we're not obliterating these guys. If we don't step on their throat in the second half, I'm going to be so disappointed. Nothing more to say, really. So we'll just get into this third quarter. Jackson, oh my gosh, deep into the end zone. Their kicker really has a leg on him. And uh, we're going to try the return. Jackson, guys missing on the tackles. He's got us good field position. We'll see what the offense can do. All righty, first down, going to the air, hoping for the best as uh, we've kind of struggled. And Grayson is going to have to get outside the pocket. And he makes a man miss, kind of picked up a block. Okay, we'll take a 27-yard pickup, even though he did take a, a pretty big hit on that tackle. Let's see. What can we do is uh, Bennett's in to take the handoff on the counter, and even with all the speed, can't get to the edge. Can't outrun a freaking linebacker. Disappointing. Well, let's try a play action on second and nine. They are bringing pressure, which means I have to get it out way sooner than I wanted to. It's complete, but short of the first down. Well, this is four down territory as far as I'm concerned. We are four or five on the day on third downs, and the blocking isn't great, but CJ Beasley with a great spin move makes a man miss. He gets nine yards on the carry to convert on third down. Give us a new set to work with. He just did that man dirty. I do not mind it, though. One bit very, very useful. Uh, bad running from me there. We still get three yards on that first down, and we will look to throw the ball. On second and seven here, quick throw to Tyson Mobley, who comes down with it inside the five for a first and goal. Well, we're at the four-yard line, which is a ways out to be doing this, but it's fullback dive time. We're going to see what J.J. Barr has, and on first down, okay. We needed four, he got three. I think that earns him another carry. Hopefully this works. Offensive line needs a good push, and nah. That's how it always happens. We have a good fullback dive and then a bad one, but guess what? We're going to go back to him again and have a good one. They might be expecting three in a row, but the question is, can they stop it? J.J. Barr, yeah. All too easy, finds the end zone. We extend the lead again, and I'm going to go for two here just to try to make it a little bit more difficult for Virginia Tech. Might not be the smartest decision, but if we can pick it up, it looks real good for us. Rolling outside the pocket. Raiden Bennett wide open on the play. Holds on to it. 36-20 gives us a 16-point lead and just makes it... That much more difficult if the uh, Hokies are going to try to come back and win this. So Frederick kicks this one away. Not a good one as we're kicking into the wind this quarter. And good special teams. Keeping them inside the 25. We'll take that. Now the defense needs to get a stop. I just, it's been so frustrating. They have either been phenomenal or awful. There's no in between all game long as... Virginia Tech goes back to the option. Medlock's going to lose four yards. Just didn't have the space to pitch that one safely. And we can expect them to pass here, but I wouldn't be surprised if they ran with the setup they are in. And trying to guard the corner out. I had way too many guys to cover over there. 
Gave up 11 yards, but it's still third down. We're going to try to bring a blitz here. Kind of expecting a run. No, they step out to pass. Over the middle, they had a guy. Coverage isn't there. Baker needs to get the tackle, and he does, but it allows Virginia Tech to get to midfield. So what can we do? It's been a struggle. Expecting the run here. They go up the middle. We clog the gaps. Nowhere for Greer to go. He only gets a yard on the play. Let's just continue to hope that this works. They're going to step back to pass again, and the corner blitz was coming. You know, got Medlock a little bit worried. He throws it away, and it's third and long. So definitely happy that we're in this third down situation, but we haven't defended it all that well. It's a screen. A killing gets in there and disrupts it, and finally we get the stop for a loss of yards. Uh, couldn't get in there to get the pick, but I'll take a stop. So fourth and 12, we'll see these guys kick it away. Not expecting a chance at a good punt return, but you know what? I'm actually going to force Marquise to not field it. Thankfully, that apparently didn't touch him. Just a touchback. That was scary. Massive bounce on the punt. We have a chance to really open up this game with a, a touchdown on this drive. So we'll look to pass on first and 10. Pressure's coming. Just go with the simple throw to Logan Malden and get the easy yards. Second and five now. We'll hand the ball off up the middle. And CJ's got the first down. So we're moving the ball well. It's just, you know, I keep looking for home runs and that's what's screwing us up. Unfortunately for... Uh, Anybody who wants me not to throw picks, that's not going to stop me. We'll try the little bubble fake route to Beasley, and there's our running back picking up 18 more yards. That play worked really well as they were trying to bring the blitz. On this first down, we will continue to pass. Uh, yo, I have no idea what I was doing there. Uh, my mind just blanked. I wasn't even looking at receivers. We're lucky not to get sacked. Let's try to bounce back from that one with a, just a simple run up the middle on uh, second and ten and well we can get just back to the line of scrimmage and have it a third and long to deal with very interesting on third down oh look at who's wide open Jackson catches it in stride the diving tackle misses and I do not need to hold the sprint button he is way too fast Marquise Jackson 51 yards into the end zone I think that's his second big receiving touchdown of the day and he is really turning into a weapon I think the next two years for him are going to be pretty incredible there's only one safety uh, on that play back deep. So when he uh, just left the area that Marquise was going to be running to, it was all too easy of a decision. It works out. Now a 23-point lead near the end of the third quarter. Question for me at this point is, how much can we win by? I want a big win. I don't know how much we'd go for it. Guys have to be open. Oh, my gosh. Our coverage is terrible. That should never be as easy as it was. We'll try the man coverage again. I don't expect it to work as they're going to go jet sweep and Shelton brings the hammer down on Jaden Peo. And that was all too easy. That's going to be the end of the third quarter here as the clock comes to triple zero. So, you know, as we head into the fourth, good looking lead. Doesn't seem like we can lose this, but, you know, I want, uh, I want to come away with a dominating win still. So to start this fourth quarter, they're going to step back to pass. That's me getting burned because I, I'm bad at the game, I guess. And, well, they pick up a first down, no problem. Quarterback now 17-23 for nearing 300 yards on the game as this one is going to be... Oh, my gosh. How do we have linebackers that are so bad at tackling sometimes? Just a little bit disappointing that that keeps happening as we try to bring the blitz... And look at that. Wide open man. Diggs not going to get the tackle. And that's going to be a touchdown after another broken tackle. 42 yards. Virginia Tech goes into the end zone. I, I legitimately do not understand what's happening in this game. This again, 68 overall quarterback. He doesn't miss. He's making perfect reads. He threw up one 50-50 ball that got picked off. Other than that, man, we are lucky this isn't their starter playing. Virginia Tech going to go for this two-point conversion. We're bringing the safety blitz and... Shelton was there. Not sure how he doesn't get his hands up, so it's converted, and now I'm kind of expect an onside kick. No, no onside kick, uh, apparently, so <laughs> Marquise uh, going to try to return this. Why not? Maybe we make him uh, really embarrassed with a great return, or we can just be inside the 15. I don't understand these teams sometimes. Well, they are uh, still fighting. We'll give them that. 
What they aren't doing is covering Marquise Jackson properly. One play, he's gone. Oh my goodness. Get out of here, Virginia Tech. You can't beat us. Stop wasting your time. Absolutely phenomenal. Grayson has broken the record for school passing yards in a game, or the school record for passing yards in a game. Up to 419, I believe that said. That's a good game for Grayson. <laughs> So it's 50 to 28. Now they did technically gain a point on us uh, because they went for two and we only went for one. But uh, like, uh, I'm just not worried about it at this point. Five minutes left. It would take an absolute collapse from this team to lose this game. I think that our plan here is just to continue with the man blitzes until this one ends. Hope that it works in our favor and hope that we don't get burned too bad. I left the running back open, but Shelton gets there to break it up saved my bacon that's for sure and second down again looking at to try and stop these guys from passing kale mackey getting burned but gets the uh stop and there's a flag down maybe a holding a clipping interesting uh we might decline this except it's a second and 17 yeah we'll do that it was on a wide receiver must have been early in the play but maybe backing him up and we'll try to bring a little bit of pressure again. Man, Blitz not really putting a safety out there, so puts us into some danger. And look at that. Basically, no change. We shouldn't have accepted the penalty other than just maybe to waste time. And I want to get this stop, but I don't feel confident. Getting burned over the middle. No, look, it's just out route after out route. My goodness, our coverage is awful. It's just actually atrocious. We can run the same play over and over and not have anything bad happen. Thankfully, for the most part, we're tackling him in bounds, but this hurry-up is so annoying to deal with. You're down three scores. We just keep dealing with these teams that don't know when to call it quits. And it's just, it just annoys me. All right, I, I just want the ball back. Honestly, if they score, they score. We're just going to start blitzing like crazy. Maybe make this quarterback make mistakes. Or he can just... Literally all they're throwing is out routes. Short out route, step out of bounds. So as long as they continue to do that, we're just going to continue to bring this engage eight. I, I just don't care at this point. It's a... Look at that. Another short out route. A couple yards out of bounds. This is... <laughs> this is such a waste of time. They called that one out of bounds, which is unfortunate because it stops the clock. But we're just going to go right back at him. And hey, look at that. Now you've got yourself in a fourth down, Virginia Tech. So... Screw you. They're going to go for it. Fourth and six. Not sure we can stop them. They step back to pass. And we're there to break up the pass. I knew that route was coming. So turnover on downs. You know what? Screw these guys. We're going to continue to try to light them up. So no deep safety. What are the odds? Marquise Jackson deep. I'm throwing it up. I'm giving him a chance. Oh, <laughs> got it into his hands. But the defense breaks it up. That would have been too big. Had to go for the uh, the attempt there. We'll just start running the ball and, and let the clock burn. Or maybe CJ Beasley breaking some tackles can just continue to pick up yards. Only 84 on the ground as a team today because we've thrown so well. But that's a nice carry. First and 10. They're going to just uh, try to stop us up the middle. And I'm curious if they take their timeouts at all. Or if they finally accept defeat. We'll go ahead and just burn the clock out now. Uh, this would be the spot if they were going to take a timeout. Oh my gosh, Braden Bennett just fighting through the contact. Gets 10 yards. And with uh, just over two minutes to go, you got to think. It's finally over. 50 to 28. I'm definitely happy with the result. There's other things that could have gone better. We should have beat them by more. And the defense was honestly pretty disappointing. But aside from a couple of stupid interceptions that I threw... The offense played phenomenally. Uh, I've been waiting for Marquise Jackson to have a game like this all season long. And he's finally come out and done it. Kick return, touchdown, a couple of long bombs through the uh, receiving game. And we'll just keep driving, looking for this first down. Third and three, Beasley almost going to score there. It's first and goal, and I'd like to maybe score on the last play of the game. So on this uh, first down, we'll take a knee. And that should allow us to get a fullback dive off on second and goal. Actually, you know, we're going to try the uh, the read option. We haven't run one of these all game. It's from the Wildcat. And Beasley's going to keep it. And he's going to break a tackle, but he's going to lose yards. You know what? I'm taking the timeout. Screw these guys. We're scoring again. 
See what we can do. Third and goal. Final play of the game. Grayson outside the pocket. Has Johnson wide open. And DJ Johnson scores the points just to rub it in their face a little bit. And we're getting booed by the fans here. But screw them. Blame your coach. We kick the extra point and end this one. Good game for us. Uh, Wake Forest. Losing to Clemson. But who knows? Too early to tell on that one. But end of ours. Uh, we made it look a little bit better with that final touchdown than it really was. Grayson had a great game. Six touchdowns, 449 yards. Uh, the two turnovers is kind of souring. We lost the turnover battle today, but all in all, pretty solid. Marquise Jackson, five catches for 219 yards and four touchdowns is pretty ridiculous. So at the end of that one, man, you know, uh, convincing victory, scoring two touchdowns a quarter. Uh, we did enough early to, to get the lead and not have to worry about looking back. A lot of yards. Uh, we passed the ball well. We couldn't stop them from passing. Again, I just have to keep saying this because how ridiculous it is. 337 yards given up against a 68 overall quarterback. And he threw less interceptions than us. So just absurd. Marquise is our offensive player of the game. Roger Reed with his interception early in that first quarter. It's our defensive player of the game, but it's just absurd to me how, how bad the defense played at times. But at the end of it, we moved to 6-1. and one. We should be ranked. If we're not ranked, I'm going to be just losing my mind. We'll face Virginia now at home as we are now bowl eligible. And we're just going to keep trying to move the wheels down on this season, hoping for that playoff berth, but, uh, you know, every game that comes in front of us is the most important one yet, so we'll see what we can do there. A uh, bunch of guys are now ready to visit, which is good news. Tyrone Hodges is committed to UCF, but that doesn't quite matter as much to us. Only 69 overall wide receivers, so we're in a good spot. Set three school records. Passing touchdowns in the game, passing yards in the game, and receiving touchdowns in the game. We've got an NCAA Player of the Week and a Conference Player of the Week. We're not ranked. How could we not be ranked right now? Are we, are we 26th? We dropped down in the rankings after winning. We're 28th now. We went into that game 27th. What on earth? There better be a ton of upsets in front of us. Number 7, Auburn loses. Number 2, Vanderbilt loss. Number 10, Colorado loss. 15 Arizona State, Mississippi's or Michigan State lost, Illinois lost, uh, Nebraska and Miami lost, and yet we aren't receiving votes or, or enough. We're not ranked. We were 23rd in the media poll. Are we st at least still there? Did we move up at all? We moved up to 22nd. What did we do to the coaches of the NCAA that they refused to rank us? This is just absurd. Look at this. Four and two. Four and two. Any three loss teams? If there's a three loss team, three and three USC. They're three overall better than us. They can't seem to win. They just barely won in overtime. We're six and one. How could we not be ranked ahead of this USC team? That is preposterous. Absolutely absurd. Heisman watches. Not really. Uh, anything crazy yet a lot of running backs a couple of quarterbacks still not uh not a crazy amount of great players no like 99s this year but uh player of the week we've got marquise jackson up there because of his great game so good for him and uh how about our championship contender is that at least going up we were a b plus we're still a b plus just uh i mean how can you just disrespect us so so much at this point, Grayson McCall is a top 10 passer in the country. CJ Beasley is at 53rd rushing. Uh, receiving wise, I guess they don't go beyond the top 10, which is odd. Tackle leaders, again, we discount. Sack leaders, though, Kale Mackey with four puts him at 40th in the country. We've got Stokes Jr. with two picks at 134th in the country. And kicking wise, have we kicked any field goals this year? I don't know. That list is only going to top five as well. We certainly aren't going to hit a 56 yarder, though. And we've got a 2-3 and three Virginia who is worse than us up to bat. Um, I mean, I think that we have a good chance to win this. We should win it, no problem. They lost to Oregon, Charlotte, beat an FCS team, beat Clemson, although it's a 3-2 and two Clemson, and then just lost to Louisville. So, 
Let's uh, let's hope that we can win that. Maybe seven and one we can get ranked. It's a real shame that we're not undefeated because we might be top ten at this point. But just no respect, even after such a record-setting game for us. Unfortunately, though, that's gonna do it for this episode. I don't know. What do you guys think? Why aren't we ranked? I'm very curious as to what the rationale could be behind that. And if you believe that we should be ranked, who knows, maybe you hit the like button. <laughs> or if you like the video. Um, goodness. If you are not already subscribed and you want to be notified when new videos come out, please feel free to hit subscribe. It means the world to me and it helps out the channel quite a bit. And while you're down there doing those two things, you can head to the description where you'll find links to my Twitch at twitch.tv slash goonmaster, as well as a link to my Twitter and our community Discord. And as always, there's a link to get the college football revamped mod if you want it for yourself. That being said, thanks again for watching. My name is Goonmaster. You guys are the Teal Boys. And wherever you are, have a good night or have a good morning. And we'll see you later. Adios.